Hello everyone, it's Mariners Fanatic, and today I'm going to be doing my off-season preview video for the Seattle Mariners. The winter meetings around the corner, non-tender deadline up soon, arbitration, the Rule 5 draft, trades and free agency about to kick off. I figured this was probably the best time I could make this video. If you guys could stick around for as long as you can on this one, uh, I just put a lot, in, a lot of time and effort into this video. Go through the highlights and pick and choose what you want, even if you don't listen to the whole thing. I'd really appreciate it because uh, I spent a lot of time on this one. But without further ado, I'm going to get into it and talk about what I think the Mariners will do this offseason and what their team looks like going forward into 2021. First, I'm going to be talking about what the Mariners, their roster would look like if nothing changed and we went into 2021 with only movements from within the organization. So on this first page, you're going to see on the left, there's the pitchers. On the right is the hitters. People in red are locks for the roster, no matter what you do. They're kind of locks, barring any trades or something crazy happens. But these guys are pretty much on the roster. The people in yellow, those are bullpen arms. Um, those are guys out of the bullpen that I think are going to stay there, but they're not necessarily guaranteed, except for maybe Kendall Graven, as he just got that $1 million contract kind of restructured. Overall, that's kind of what you're looking at. You know, I split it up into left-handed pitchers and right-handed pitchers. Did the same for righties and lefties, the hitters. And Sam Haggerty there is the only switch hitter. Looking at the pitchers side of things, obviously, Marco Gonzalez, Justice Sheffield, and Kikuchi are going to be back, especially with Kikuchi's contract. He may not have been our best starter last year, but he did show some signs of improvement, and he's under contract, so you might as well throw him out there. Nick, I'm not even going to try and say his last name because I always screw it up. He may or may not be in the rotation, may or may not be in the bullpen. I'm not sure how they're going to use him. He was good last year, um, but depending on what we do in the trade market or free agency market, he may not be in the rotation anymore. And those uh, bullpen names in yellow, those are all guys who I think are going to stick around in the bullpen. Misevich, uh, Kendall Graveman, Joey Gerber, and Johan Ramirez. And then Justin Dunn, I could see him moving to the bullpen if we make a move in free agency or through the trade market. But if not, he'll probably stay in that six-man rotation. And then Aaron Fletcher, uh, he had a rough go last year in 2020, but he was pretty young. So I think he'll still eventually be with the club at some point next year. And I think he'll start out as the second lefty um, if, for whatever reason, Misevich or Mark Markovicius um, don't make the club. Brandon Brennan, he's coming back from injury. He'll be on there, I think. Casey Sadler did well last year. I think he'll be on there. And then Domingo Tapia was a pickup already from this offseason, off of waivers, I believe. And he's a big right-handed power pitcher. He'll probably, they'll give him a shot. He'll be in there at some point as well. Moving over to the hitters side of things, you've got Tom Murphy. Hopefully he's back and healthy from his broken foot. Luis Torrens did well last year. He'll stick around as the backup catcher. Evan White, first base. Dylan Moore, second base or utility. Mitch Hanniger in right. Kyle Lewis in center. Ty France, third, second, DH. Tim Lopes, utility. Kyle Seeger at third. J.P. Crawford at short. Kalenic in left. Jose Marmaleos, left field, first base, DH. And then Sam Haggerty can play just about anywhere. So that's kind of what I see them doing with the roster if nothing too dramatic changes and they just stick with what they have for the most part. I think they're going to make a few moves, but the team will probably look something similar to this minus a few names here and there. So mainly focus on those names in red as people that will for sure be on the club and those names in white and possibly even yellow for guys who may or may not be on the club. Starting off with the free agent predictions, our biggest need is relief pitching. That was very evident. We had a bullpen ERA almost to six. The bullpen was atrocious. Only a few names stood out, like Johan Ramirez. Um, Misevich did fairly well. Kendall Graveman, once he transitioned from the rotation, the bullpen did all right. And Joey Gerber did okay as well. But other than that, it was a revolving door and a struggle for the Mariners' pen in 2020. So who are we looking at here? Uh, we're looking for veteran names that you'll pay a little bit for them, but not too much. Uh, my first name on that 
uh, side with the right-handed pitchers, Alex Colome. I don't see us picking him up. I think the White Sox will probably get him back, but he has been with Seattle before and may be interested in returning. So I have him there. Jeremy Jeffress might be a little bit too top tier. Um, he had a great year last year. I don't know if we'll be able to secure his services next year, but Jeremy Jeffress would be a name to look out for. Juan Nicasio has also been with the Mariners before. Did not pitch amazing last year, but he's definitely a veteran name. Potential for bounce back. The last name on there is probably the most intriguing one to me. Blake Trinan had a nice comeback here with the Dodgers. I think he'd be affordable, um, and I think he would bring a big boost in the back end of that bullpen. You know, he's he's been a solid pitcher over the years. He's had a couple of rough spots, but overall, I think Blake Trinan is probably the guy I would want to target the most. Him or Alex Colome, but I don't think we'll get Colome. But yeah, Trinan, Trinan for right-handed reliever would be my pick. And then for lefties, I have Sean Doolittle, Aaron Loop, and Jake McGee there. Aaron Loop did really well um, for the Tampa Bay Rays, both in the postseason and regular season. Jake McGee pitched fairly well for the Dodgers after struggling with the Rockies. I think he would be a solid pickup as well. Uh, but the one I would personally target would be Sean Doolittle. Um, you know, he's, he's coming off some great seasons with the Nationals, pitched well for the A's. Um, both these guys, former A's, torturing us in the AL West. It'd be nice to return the favor. So those are the arms that I kind of see as potential relief arms. They're not tier one free agent arms, but they're probably that second tier of free agent arms. So hopefully we can pick up one of these guys or two. Moving on to my free agent predictions for starting pitching and hitters as well as looking at possible trades. There's one big one, you can already see it there on the screen, but I'll get into that in a minute. For the hitters in red there, the one, the guy that I really want is Colton Wong. He may not be the most amazing hitter, but his defense is gold glove tier with JP Crawford and Evan White already having gold gloves. Seager's a former gold glover. That infield would be stellar. Him and Crawford would be turning double plays, making all sorts of plays. And that's what kept us in the playoff race longer than we should have been last year is our defense played incredible. So adding Colton Wong to second base, I think would be amazing. He's also a lefty bat. We need more lefty bats in the lineup. There's a lot of right-handed batters. If you go back and look at my first graphic, most of our returning players would be right-handed except for a couple. Next up on that list, Michael Brantley. This is one I don't think we'll get Brantley, but it would be interesting if for whatever reason Kalenic was not ready uh, to be put in left field. Michael Brantley could play left. He could also DH. I think this would be a solid pickup. He would bring some much-needed offense, um, but I don't necessarily think we will go after him or acquire him, but it's someone that I would like to see on the Mariners. And then Marwin Gonzalez, he's kind of a utility player. Um, we already have Dylan Moore for that role. But Marwin Gonzalez would be an interesting player because he does switch hit, and we definitely need more left-handed bats in general, whether they're switch hitters or pure lefties. Uh, we need lefties in the lineup. And I think he would fill a big need in second base and left field, um, and so I think he'd be a good pickup. Brock Holt would also be another good pickup utility guy. He can play pretty much anywhere in the infield and some left field. Uh, so that'd be another good pickup. And then Jerks and Profar. Uh, this one's an interesting one. I grew up watching Jerks and Profar play for the Spokane Indians when he was coming up for the Texas Rangers. Um, Spokane Indians played against the Everett Aquasox, uh, which is a minor league team that's closest to where I'm from. It'd be cool to see Profar come to the team, play second base, left field, some third base, whatever we need him to do. Uh, he's got great defense, and you know his offense is improving. He's He has struggled at times offensively, but there's definitely a lot of potential there. Moving over to starting pitchers, Taiwan Walker, he's the guy I want back. Uh, Jerry DePoto talked about re-signing him um, even when they were trading him. He's like, we want to re-sign this guy. I would love to see Taiwan Walker back, and I think it would be a great fit for him as well. The only other competition I really see for Taiwan Walker is somebody like the Blue Jays, who obviously we traded him to. I also see the Yankees possibly jumping in on a on a low payroll guy like Walker. He's not going to command a huge contract, so they could go that route. Uh, next name on there, Anthony 
Descalafini. I'm not sure if I said his last name right. He didn't have the best year last year with the Reds, but overall he has had a decent career, and I think he would be a good you know, bottom of the starting rotation kind of guy. Jake Odorizzi, this one might be out of our price range depending on what he's looking for. He's pitched well for the Rays um, and Twins in the past. There's talks about him either going back to the Twins or the Rays. So that one, not necessarily going to happen, but something I could see happening um, as he's not a Tier 1 starting pitcher for free agency. He's probably about a Tier 2 guy. And then a couple lefties. Our rotation is already stacked with left-handed pitching, so I don't think we will go after a lefty. But Alex Wood and Jay Happ are a couple of interesting names. James Paxson's also there, but I don't think that DePoto is going to want to get Paxton back because he's just too injury-prone. Um, Alex Wood has pitched well for the Dodgers over the past few years. It'd be interesting to see if he could fit into our rotation. Jay Happ has been with the Mariners before, I don't know if that's an option we want to go towards, but those are a couple of lefties that I think we could target if we do decide to target a left-handed pitcher in free agency. So lastly, on this page, I want to talk about potential trades. You know, there's always trades that happen. You're like, oh, didn't necessarily see it coming, but makes sense. Um, this is one that I think needs to happen. We need to try and trade for Blake Snow. He's from this area. I think it would be a great fit. Add another lefty arm to our rotation, but that's okay uh, because he's definitely worth it. Now, what we would have to give up, I think we would have to give up one of our top four pitching arms, whether that's uh, Logan Gilbert, Emerson Hancock, or one of our other top starting pitcher prospects. But ultimately, I think the guy we should probably trade is George Kirby. I think he's not necessarily a number one in the rotation kind of guy. He's probably a mid-rotation guy, uh, but he's definitely got elite stuff um, as far as control, and you know he's got a good fastball. And the, I mean, there's a lot to say about George Kirby. He's definitely a good pitcher overall. In general, I would say he's the one that I would not necessarily like to see go, but I think gives us a good shot at getting Blake Snow and doesn't damage our long-term future. Next, we need to give them an outfield prospect I would say Taylor Trammell is probably the way to go. There's articles talking about Julio Rodriguez and Jared Kalenic being included in a Snell trade. I don't see that happening. There's no way we trade Kalenic, and I don't see us trading Julio Rodriguez either. They're too good of prospects to give up. That's like if we traded Ken Griffey Jr. 30 years ago. That would not be a good idea. I just don't, don't think that's a good idea. So Taylor Trammell would be my pick if we gave up a top outfield prospect. Infield prospect Joe Rizzo is a good option. Personally, I think you know we've got Seager for another year. Ty France could play third. We could even go after a third baseman in free agency the next couple of years. I think that third base is a position we eventually need to figure out once Seager's gone. But in the meantime, I think we're okay, and trading Joe Rizzo would be a decent option. And then a relief pitching prospect, Wyatt Mills, he just got added to our 40-man roster, actually. So I know that the Mariners front office is interested in his potential, but I also think that gives a reason for why he could be a part of this trade and a potential trade piece. Um, I'm hoping that they can get this trade done somehow, some way. I do not want him going to the Yankees or the Red Sox or the Angels, somebody in the AL West. I'd like to see him come here um, or send him to the National League because I don't want him in the American League bothering the Mariners as we try to make a playoff push over the next couple of years. Snell, I want him in a Mariners uniform. Colton Wong, I'd love to see him here. And Taiwan Walker, I would love to see him back as well. So those are kind of my thoughts on that. Other trades could happen, but I don't think any other trades would top a Blake Snell trade. So those are my free agent trade predictions for what the Mariners will do this offseason. So lastly, I want to talk about my hopes for what our 2021 roster looks like. Uh, looking at the rotation first, if we were able to trade for Blake Snell, he'd instantly go into that number one slot in the rotation. Marco Gonzalez would follow him if we were able to pick up Taiwan Walker. He'd be right there in the number three spot. Justice Sheffield definitely earned himself a spot last year. He'd be right there in the four spot. You'd say Kikuchi would be our five starter. And then Justin Dunn would be the six starter. Or potentially someone like Anthony 
Descalafini or another right-handed pitching arm. But we can't have five lefties in this six-man rotation, so they've got to have at least two righties in there, I think. That's what the rotation is hopefully going to look like if we can get trades and free agency done how I hope we do. Um, I think that'd be a pretty solid rotation. Looking at the lineup, if you insert Colton Wong in there at the leadoff spot, I think that'd be amazing. Mitch Haniger is hopefully back and healthy. Kyle Lewis, Seager, Ty France, DHing, Kalenic in left, Evan White back at first, Tom Murphy catching, and then Crawford at short. On our bench, you'd have Dylan Moore running all over the field wherever he plays. You'd have Luis Torrens, backup catcher. I think Sam Haggerty is one of our best choices as another utility guy. As a switch hitter and a speed threat, he can play anywhere in the field as well. And then Marmaleos would be a good bat to have, as well as play a decent first base in some left field. So that's what I think the bench will look like. Uh, Tim Lopes, if we don't get Colton Wong, Tim Lopes will probably be that other guy that we see there. And Dylan Moore would probably head into that uh, starting second base position. For relief pitching, I would say Kendall Graveman, Joey Gerber, Anthony Masevich, Johan Ramirez are probably the guys we'll have in there, as well as Nick Margovicius as the uh, long relief guy. And then hopefully we can get Sean Doolittle or Blake Trinan. And then if we can't get either of those guys or neither, uh, Brandon Brennan, Casey Sadler, Domingo Tapia are all decent options to have in the pen as well. Aaron Fletcher, uh, Sam Delaplane, Juan Ten is a growing prospect in our system. There's a lot of bullpen options, but we just we definitely need to improve that pen as last year was really bad. I didn't put those bullpen names up there because it was a lot of names, but that's kind of what my hopeful roster is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown and what I think is going to happen in free agency. Hopefully you guys liked the video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Um, I'm going to be pumping out a little more content, hopefully, um, over the next few weeks as things happen. But I'm excited for this offseason. I'm excited for next year. March couldn't come soon enough. That'll be Mariners Fanatic, and I'll see you guys next time.